Hello and welcome everyone to my channel, Team Lynch Spirit of Adventure. I'm your host, Michael Lynch, and today we're going to be talking about Vietnamese iced coffee, specifically sugar-free Vietnamese iced coffee. If you're not familiar with what a Vietnamese iced coffee is, generally speaking, it's a big glass or sometimes a medium glass, an ice glass full of ice with sweetened condensed milk and really, really strong espresso-like coffee in it, um, mixed and then sipped, usually in hot weather. Um, today, we're going to make a sugar-free version of that. We're going to be using Café du Monde, which is kind of the traditional kind of French-style chicory coffee um, that uh, Vietnamese iced coffee is typically made with. Um, it is the same type of stuff you've heard about in New Orleans with the beignets, Café du Monde, because of the French influence um, over Vietnam that we use that. Um, and actually, Vietnamese iced coffee actually has a whole Vietnamese name. I'll put it right here. I'm not going to try to pronounce it though because even though I'm half Vietnamese, I don't speak Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese and my mom does get on to me about that. Instead of the sweetened condensed milk, what I'm going to do is show you how to make a sweetened condensed milk using evaporated milk and then this monk fruit sweetener. Now for this type of stuff that we're going to be doing, I use this Lancato, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, or Lacanto. La Canto. I don't know, but that's how you pronounce it, whatever. That's how you, I think that's how you say it. But using this brand of sweetener because it has um, an additive to it called, I don't even know how to pronounce it really, but erythrol, erythrol, I don't know. It begins with an E. It's the first ingredient when you look on the back of it. This actually helps the sweetener act more like a regular sugar sweetener. Um, and so in most recipes, you'll see that you add it. Um, you know, kind of tablespoon for tablespoon with regular sweetener. There is a brown sugar version of this, but it's super hard to find. I couldn't find it myself. So I, I generally use this the regular kind here. So we're gonna use this, the sweetener, to make a sweetened condensed milk. We're gonna use in the bottom of this glass to pour our Vietnamese coffee into. We're gonna put our filter just on the top like this. Put the coffee into our filter or fin. I think that's how you pronounce it. I think it's the Vietnamese way to say it. P-H-I-N. This fin. And it's almost like a coffee press. If you kind of take a look at it here, um, it's got a screw in, in the bottom so you can actually screw this piece on right here and actually kind of tamps down the coffee into there and it drips through these little tiny holes. You can see them. Oh, you can get it to focus. You can see these little tiny holes that actually Make, lets the coffee drip into the cup. And so you have super concentrated coffee going into the bottom of your glass here, mixing with your sweetened condensed milk. Mix all that together, throw ice on top of it. It's absolutely refreshing. So let me show you how you do this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, I do have my trusty pot. Um, I actually make a lot of Vietnamese coffee, <laughs> and, uh, or at least sweetened condensed milk, my version of it in this pot. So this is old blue for me, so please don't make fun of it. It's my trusty little saucepan. Um, but I'm gonna just turn the heat on here to medium, uh, on the just on a regular burner. And we're gonna add our evaporated milk. You can use any brand, the Borden stuff, it doesn't really matter. Um, I like the Kirkland, I like the Costco version. Um, I buy it by the case because I do make a lot of Vietnamese coffee. But we're going to put 12 ounces in there uh, into our pot here. Let that kind of heat up a little bit. Now, you'll notice that when you get sweetened condensed milk at the store, you compare it to the evaporated milk. The sweetened condensed milk is going to be, it's like slime. You know, if you've ever seen kids like make slime and stuff like that. Super, super kind of gooey, gets everywhere, it just runs forever. It's, it has long strings like mozzarella cheese almost. Evaporated milk's not going to be like that, but technically that kind of thickness that you see in a sweetened version, it is the sugar that's kind of also been reduced down. So that's why it, it seems a little bit different, but you're using the same thing just without the sugar. So the way that we're going to make this sweet, like sweetened condensed milk, as I said, we're going to take our monk fruit sweetener here, Lacanto, and we're going to take eight heaping tablespoons. I know it sounds like a lot, but it really does but it's not. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, oops, 
11, 12. Yep, I may have skipped one. I don't know. I think I got 12 in there. Pretty sure I got 12 in there. So 12 in there. I like to take my handy old red. See, I got a battle scar on old red from cooking with this guy so much. A good silicone spatula. You can use wood or spatula, I should say. You can use wood as well. Um, I just, I, I prefer not to use um, any kind of metal utensils on anything that is nonstick, like old blue here. And so we're going to make sure that we dissolve this. If you don't dissolve this all the way, um, obviously it's not going to work right for you. And what you also want to do is um, get it not only to the point that you don't have any more granules in the bottom, uh, but you also want to make sure uh, that you are heating it and you know, reducing it slightly. Okay, so here's where we're at. I took my eight ounces of evaporated milk, put in 12 tablespoons of my monk fruit sweetener in my saucepan old blue and reduced it down slightly. So I got it to boiling, um, reduced the heat a little bit, left it on there constantly. We're not constantly stirring it, but um, just stirring it every once in a while, making sure I don't scorch it, burn it, whatever you want to call. Um, you can take whatever you don't use and put it into a Tupperware. It will keep in the refrigerator for three days or so. I would recommend using it um, within three days uh, because you will start to have these kind of crystals forming in the bottom of your Tupperware where it starts to kind of recrystallize. I guess it's because of the, either the monk fruit or the additive that's in there um, becoming less effective and it just starts congealing or clumping together again. You can always um, re-dissolve it if you reheat it, but it's a little bit of a hassle in the morning when you're trying to make your coffee if you want to make this in the morning and put it in your thermos. So I tend to put it in this uh, Tupperware, I'll put it in the fridge, and I usually use it within three days. Um, so I'll have three more days with coffee, four total days of Vietnamese coffee with a container about this size with one 12 ounce uh, can of evaporated milk. So I've put two to three ounces of the evaporated milk mixture that I've, I've done, my zero sugar sweetened condensed milk. I also have my fin here, and so what we're going to do is just put that on top, so the way it goes there on top. We're also going to take our inside filter out of our fin, which is right here. And we're going to take our Café du Monde, and we're going to make sure we get about two tablespoons in there. And this is where you don't want to necessarily be heaping. You want to be about right on as possible. And this is also to preference as well. What I like to do, if you're putting something in here like this, and you know, obviously it's kind of a cup. I know it's going to be really hard to kind of see that on camera, but I like to make it as even as possible. I like to make sure I get all the coffee grounds off that screw in the middle. And this is the tricky part. So I, finger kind of tighten the middle of the the um, the filter down and I kind of spin it so as soon as I hit a little bit of resistance I'll kind of back it off a little bit and I'll just kind of fling it forward righty tighty lefty loosey um, because you know if you're putting coffee grounds in the bottom of this just theoretically speaking it's going to be kind of lumpy and that filter is going to spin down and try to flatten it very evenly so you're going to have some lumps as you kind of make it even and that's what that first resistance is i like to make sure that i flatten it all out you don't want to tighten it all the way down you want to get it about finger tight to where you start to feel the resistance where it's not going to go anymore there is kind of like a phillips head or i'm sorry a flat head screw kind of thing right there in your filter if you can see it I know it's kind of hard with the light, the filter, um, with the, um, the focus, but you can kind of see there and use that to gauge that you're going to want to back this off about one full turn. So whenever you get it to basically you've kind of stamped down your, your grounds, you know you have it all even, you're not getting resistance just because it's lumpy on the top, you want to back it off one full turn. Again, that's also preference. But if you have that too tight, your water is not going to be able to permeate through your coffee grinds and get into your your cup here so that's what we do for that now this these fins come in a, a couple different sizes um, four ounces six ounces eight ounces typically most common ones you'll find are six and eights 
this is a six ounce fin. Um, I do like to put about eight ounces in my coffee usually, but um, sometimes I will do six you know, or less if I don't have a lot of the condensed milk left. So we're gonna put eight ounces in here and you wanna heat it um, to just below boiling. So you don't wanna take it all the way to 12 and beyond. You want it about 210 at the most. 190 to 200 is probably ideal. It's in a sweet spot. I've kind of dialed this in. I don't have a, a kettle, an electric kettle with a thermostat on it. So what I do is I use this Pyrex kind of measuring cup. I put eight ounces in here and I put it in my thousand watt microwave for a minute and 45 seconds and it gets it just about perfect for me. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I got my water. See here, it's not really boiling. It's like right below boiling, but it's pretty steamy. So kind of a, I don't know if it's a crucial step, but it's definitely a way that I like to make this coffee is that I don't necessarily just douse the, the fin with this liquid. Um, as you saw, there's like a screw head there in the middle. So I like just pouring it right on top of that. I feel like it's a gentle way to put stuff in there and, or put the, I feel like it's a gentle way to put the water in there some reason I think that matters. But I put about a quarter of an inch of water in there and I kind of let it sit. What you want to do is is let the, the, the little bit of water you put in there kind of infuse those dry coffee grounds. Um, you'll notice that if you kind of watch it, and I'm kind of a weirdo, I stare at this stuff in the morning, maybe it's because I'm half asleep, but um, you can see it slowly start to kind of go down and get absorbed into those coffee grounds below the filter and you will start to see a couple drips of coffee come down just like that after a few seconds. At that point, I go ahead and I put the rest until I get to the top of the fin. And yes, as I said, I got a little bit of water left over. I poured eight ounces into here. This is a six ounce fin or filter. And because I'm probably mispronouncing that, um, my Vietnamese, my Vietnamese side is gonna be so mad at me. But uh, I like to let it go down just a little bit and I put a smidge more coffee in there just because I'm a coffee nut, but I also don't like it to overpower everything in the glass. So you have this little cap here. I mean, it is nice to have a good hot water in there as you're brewing your coffee. Now, generally speaking, you're gonna see this start to drip very, very fast, um, or relatively fast, I should say, when you first put the water in there. Um, that will start to slow down. Overall, it's gonna take about five minutes, maybe more, for the six ounces of water to pass through these grounds. Um, and you'll see it is slow, it gets slower and slower towards the end. Um, you can open this, keep opening it and checking on it. Um, it's not gonna mess anything up. But a word of caution, like right now, looking at it, like, oh, it's gonna take forever. And if you keep checking it like this, I swear, the more you look at this coffee, it never, or the, the water, I swear, the more that you look at this water, you will swear it does not move at all if you stare at it like that. So good piece of advice is just to close it up and, and not stare at it and let it do its thing. Like I said, it's gonna take about five minutes unless you have your filter too tight, in which case, if it is taking too long, you're going to have some stronger coffee. You do run a chance of making it bitter if you let it over brew. And so what I like to do, if I've noticed that my coffee is, is not draining as fast as I'd like, um, usually when I notice that the top of the screw head or the filter head is showing, even if it's not, if it's just below the surface of the water, it's hot. So I usually take a butter knife and I'll just open it back up another half turn, sometimes three quarters of a turn, and that will give it enough um, opening to get the rest of the water through. Not let it pour out, but let it just brew and not become bitter. So let's give this a couple minutes. Well, okay, so here's where we're at in the process. We've got all of our coffee to drain from our six ounce filter uh, into the bottom here. You can see there's no more drips or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and take the fin off. You have to be careful if you have, like I said, they do make some of these that are one piece or this cup and the saucer is one piece, mine is not. So if you have, a, it's a two piece like this, you wanna make sure that as you're pulling this off, be kind of careful, hold down the bottom piece, take that off. You'll have some residual coffee in there. It kind of creates a vacuum. And if you pull that off sometimes, like it'll just go flying and the coffee will go flying. It's not a cool thing 
at all um, to do. Now, you'll see some places, some restaurants, it'll look like this and they kind of just keep it like this until you order it and they'll throw ice in there and then they'll give you a really long spoon to kind of like mix it up with the ice to kind of mix the sweetened condensed milk together. Um, I don't tend to do that. What I tend to do is actually uh, use it, uh, sip this with a straw, so I'll use a straw to mix that up. Let me grab one, and voila. So we're gonna take our straw here just kind of, and this is just the way I do it. I like to kind of mix it up. It's generally about the color you get. If you've reduced your evaporated milk a lot, you're going to want to make sure you kind of scrape the bottom because it will start to kind of stick on the sides and the bottom of your, your glass. And then the last thing to do is add your, and I use crushed ice, but to add your ice to this. Usually do this over the sink for the video. I'm trying to do it here, just right here on the counter. big chunk. There we go. There we go. So what I like to do is kind of mix it up. Usually I get it just right there on the money where it doesn't overflow, kind of like here. And I do like making big old glasses of this coffee because it is really delicious. I like to sip it um, throughout the morning. I, this is not something you would down. It is relatively strong coffee. So I get it kind of mixed in there. I need to see what it tastes like. Mm. So that is perfect. Very strong, uh, but it has sweetness. It takes the edge off the, the, that kind of strong coffee taste. You can taste a little bit of that chicory in there. Um, you definitely taste the sweet and condensed milk, but it's not overpowering either. So it really kind of balances itself out. So I'll make sure I put the recipe um, description in the description of the video. One thing that I want to make sure I clarify in the video is that evaporated milk does have a little bit of natural sugar. So all in all, if you look at the, the nutrition facts of this evaporated milk for 12 ounces, each serving, which is a one ounce serving, uh, has three grams of sugar. Um, none of which is added sugar. So in this case, this uh, Vietnamese iced coffee is zero grams added sugar, but you will have a little bit, about six grams of natural sugar just from the evaporated milk. That is a dramatic reduction in the amount of sugar that's normally in a Vietnamese iced coffee. So if you like this recipe, if you liked how simple it was to make, give me a like, subscribe, comment, so, all right, so I'm going to leave you with this. It's the holiday season. I'm about to take a two week road trip to the East Coast with Bertha. I'll be taking plenty of snacks with me, maybe some banana bread, zero added sugar, banana bread as well. Maybe I'll do a video of that. Of course, watch out for my next videos, my road trip to the East Coast over the holidays. Until next time.